everyone, and welcome to another edition of Jhalak. series that gives you a first glance and early access to what is to follow. Today, we are going to focus on an amazingly prolific polymath artist. That's the only way I can describe Gantasala. Now, for all you newbies and youngsters who are watching, you may not be familiar with the name, but I'm urging you go to Wikipedia after you watch this program and you will discover this amazingly creative artist who is celebrating a birth centenary. He was born on December 4th, 1922. And in his memory and his honor, his family, led by his daughter-in-law, Parvati Ravi Gantasala, her son, Mohinder Gantasala, and niece, Nandita, they have together anchored, ideated, and produced a year-long series in memory and in celebration of this amazing, amazing, genius, national award-winning artist. Now imagine Gantasala, who, uh, whose voice uh, appeared in so many South Indian languages, including Hindi and Tulu, and I think he has more than 20,000 songs to his credit. So this program is not just to describe him, but to actually the Jalak is what Parvati and her Kala Pradarshini Foundation have done is they are launching a folk arts festival. Because apart from the film song that Gantasala Garu rendered, he sang so many folk songs that became immensely popular in cinema. So to talk about this folk arts festival, that will launch on December 4th, which is just coming up in a few days, and which also marks the beginning of the 100th year of Sri Gandhasala. We have with us Parvati, Mohinder, and Nandini. Thank you so much, Nandita, sorry. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. Now I'm starting off with Mohinder, who is the grandson, because he is in a sense what his other two family members call the master puppeteer. So, so when they tell us, you have uh, kept your grandfather's memory alive in so many ways, but why a folk arts festival? First, thank you so much for the opportunity. It's really exciting to actually talk about this and, uh, you know, the giving the prominence to folk arts. Um, my grandfather was a very humble person. He came from a village and thanks to him, we are all city bred, we've we traveled international and it's, you know, he, he was a seed. Um, and many times I've heard stories from my grandmother as to how he struggled during his, um, you know, as he was growing up and how he eventually came up to the city and then opportunities opened up for him. But one of the things that uh, resonated strongly was the struggles that people go through in the villages because he was not uh, um, a film musician before he came to Chennai or before he came to a city. He was also performing folk music. He was performing at temples as a temple priest, as a temple Brahmin. Uh, so everything revolved around the village and activities of the village uh, that he lived in. And subsequently he came to the city and opportunities came and then he, he entered the movie industry. Uh, but then what was really strong uh, as a foundation was his experiences in his village life, the simplicity that it taught him, the, the, the feeling of a community. And when the pandemic hit us, uh, the first thing that uh, all of us were like, okay, let's go buy the groceries, let's see this, uh, seeing my mother, oh, my st students are not coming, my programs are getting canceled, my international students are not able to come in. The first thought was obviously that, but as the pandemic, you know, as we got adjusted to it, then reality hit us that we are all privileged. We are all privileged to be in the city. We are privileged to have a house. 
food is not a concern, all those things are not a concern. And then as we started discussing, uh, it hit us hard that we are privileged and we have the ability to help others. And every year we've been doing this uh, birth anniversary celebration for my grandfather, picking up different songs, um, you know, bringing in artists from all over the place. And we say like, okay, the people we are working with are already well-known, popular, stalwarts, exponents. But then there's this one set of people where, you know, they don't have this access. And that is where it came up that how do we get this access, this privilege that we have as internet, as social media, how do we take this to them? That's, that, that was how it all started off. And then, you know, it, it was very easy for us to connect with all the stories of growing up and stuff like that to quickly connect. Yes, we need to do this. It's important we do it now and not later. So that was the... Uh, Sorry. So that was the theme. Uh, you know, in reading his uh, about him, he also went to jail because he also participated in the freedom struggle. So it's it's quite a storied life. And um, you can't think of um, a certain generation of Telugu actors like Nagesh Rao and Enti Ramarao without the voice of Ghantasala, you know? Yes. And um, so he's, I mean, he really straddles. He is like a colossus for that generation. But we're coming back. Folk Arts Festival. So uh, I'm, my next question is going to Parvati, the daughter-in-law of Gantasala, Moinda's mother. So Parvati, you yourself are such an accomplished uh, performing artist and through the Tala Pradeshni Foundation, tell me when you decided to uh, actually uh, uh, once again, once again, sort of a fresh film and videotape uh, some folk songs that your father-in-law had made popular in cinema, how did you choose the folk forms between Tamil Nadu and uh, Telugu country? Um, first of all, Namaskaram. I'm so happy that uh, Anitaka, you are really supporting our uh, program. Um, as I was, uh, as my son told, we've been doing this for a few years, taking his songs and uh, performing with the different artists and different art forms also. So when I happened to go to Mahabalipuram festival, during the inauguration, I met lots of folk people. So something triggered me that um, such beautiful people, we should give opportunity, but how to give, how to really bring them. So during this pandemic, as we were discussing, my son told, why don't we do some folk items, folk pieces? So we started working on that past two, three months. And along with my niece, we three of us uh, exchanged our views and ideas how to bring them. Then just like that, uh, we started listening to his songs, his folk songs, especially from different uh, movies, which were very, very uh, popular. Like, as you said, Nt Rama Rao Garu, Nageshwar Garu, all these people, they really used to dance uh, for his songs. So we connected those songs and uh, uh, there is a wonderful folk uh, people. We invited them. We invited them. Folk, it is not a free hand. They have their free moments. Folk people generally. All Tappa, Atam, Poikal, uh, Godre, so many varieties. They have their own uh, way of doing the styles. But I insisted, according to the his song, you have to enact. And these folk people, they really practice so well. And it really gelled. We gave them 10, 15, two weeks time, we gave them to practice. So we started taking the songs and uh, it happened like that. We went to Dakshin Chitra for the shoot. Uh, actually, uh, Mohinder was telling, just like that, don't take, you need to shoot. So many ideas were cropping every day new, new ideas. So we uh, incorporated with those artists from the morning, from whole day with different styles and different costumes and different songs, Tamil songs. He had sung many Tamil songs. So we took them and uh, that's how we did in Chennai. Ulla sa ulla gam vunke sondam se yada se yada se yada ni jalsa se yada se yada se yada 
So in Telangana, that is Hyderabad, we went to Shilpa Ram. They gave Shilpa us yeah. Shilpa Ram. So they also were very, very uh, beautifully over there. We uh, got some few folk people and uh, we, sh we had to shoot over there. So now my niece is uh, taking the movies and just incorporating with uh, this folk, our folk, and uh, we are planning to do all this work. Work is still going on. <laughs> That's it. Of course. Of course. Well, uh, uh, Parvati has just mentioned the names of two places, Dakshina Chitra and Chennai, just outside Chennai, is a beautiful center where they have reproduced the architecture of the four South Indian states by uh, re- building traditional homes. The homes from their area has, have been brought brick and mortar and rebuilt. So it's a beautifully scenic uh, backdrop for the Tamil folk dances that Parvati has just told us about. And in uh, Hyderabad, Telangana, she has gone to a similar place called Shilparamam. So the backdrop is very picturesque. But Nandita, I'm just, I'm putting you as field producer and coordinator of this project, mm -hmm. right? I'm giving you the title. Uh, you know, one of the things that um, none of us have uh, re really realized uh, deeply is that folk artists in their smaller uh, towns, the connectivity has been so bad during the pandemic. And uh, they've not been able to either live stream or broadcast or even share any of their art during this almost two years. And without any government support, which is almost nil, I think they've really and truly suffered. So when you met them, Nandita, what was the first kind of uh, reaction from them? I mean, the, a human reaction from them that when they were getting ready to perform? I think the first thing which struck me was they're very, I mean, they're very, very earnest. They're very true to their art. It's, you know, it's not just about performing it. What I saw is they're living it. Uh, and that's probably what it is, you know, they're, they're pretty much what I call the sons and daughters of the soil. That's in fact how I've introduced them as well in the videos. Uh, and that's exactly what I felt. And the, they were so grateful, uh, you know, that they had this opportunity to perform. It didn't matter to them. Uh, as Auntie said, you see, they're more um, free, free flowing artists, you know, they, 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 they perform what they feel. But this was a little more restricted to them, but it didn't matter to them they, uh, that they had performed to these film songs, but they were just happy to perform. Uh, so this is what uh, really touched our hearts when we saw it. And we were, in a way, grateful that we were able to offer them this, this kind of an opportunity. Um, yes, that's, that's, that's what we saw. <laughs> and I guess, uh, as Mohinder says, uh, it's, it's uh, what our grandfather laid for us you know, the, the humility and uh, he pretty much believed that we need to help everybody, no matter who they are. If somebody comes knocking, nobody should go back uh, empty handed or even without food. So pretty much that's what Paru Auntie did as well this time. So, yes. Well, you know, we, are, we Tamil people say that Telugu people are version of Priyas. You know, <laughs> food is very, very important to the Telugu people as well as celebration. But going there, you're sitting in Brussels. Okay, and the three of us are here in Chennai and we're talking about a folk arts festival that is happening between Tamil soil and, you know, Andhra soil. So um, from your point of view, Moindar, um, did you have any interactions with the folk artists during the filming? Were you able to talk to them? Because, you know, this is a hereditary practice. It goes family and the men within the family or the women within the family. And it's not like a modern day classical dance, you know, where anybody and everybody can come in. So did you have any long distance interactions with them? What were, what were your feelings or takeaways? For me, uh, specifically during this, uh, during the shooting, I did not. But during the planning phases, uh, because I was there about three months ago when we started this whole discussion. Um, and I was there during the Mahabalipuram uh, festival inaugurations, like every year we used to go. That was one of my 
uh, December holiday retreats, I would say, uh, every time mom performs there. And every time we would interact with these artists and I was a part of her crew, um, I would help with something, you know, the small stuff any child would help uh, out with during the performances. And as my uh, sister Nandita just mentioned, uh, and it's not just from a dance perspective because I also learned the dangam. So my I, I currently practice with uh, one of my assistant teachers uh, who's in Tanjavur, and I, I keep talking to him uh, very often. And he comes from a family of uh, Nadaswaram Vidwans, and the impact during the pandemic. Uh, you, you, I wouldn't say that the connectivity is bad all over the place. There's a lot of improvements and developments, and a lot of this is even reaches even rural parts of India now. So that's a good thing. Uh, but it's not as effective, I would say. So they, they still have bare minimum stuff and uh, they're going through a lot of problems. But my main my, the, the main concern that was shared with me was uh, they don't have any concerts at this point. They don't have online classes. These are not things where you can have an online class and teach someone folk art. Uh, so for them, their main sustis, uh, sustenance is performances and classes. And that's gone. And, when we spoke to these people, at a minimum, they were like, at least our name will come, no, sir. That was the level. And, you know, that really, uh, you know, uh, we really felt strong that we should go ahead. Like, I know it's difficult because the first thing when we discussed this as a family, they were like, oh, how will it be to have actual folk artists perform for a movie song? We got a lot of negative feedback. <laughs> <laughs> like anything, we typically get negative feedback first. And we were like, no, I don't care about negative feedback. There are people who are struggling. They are folk artists. My grandfather's songs, you know, I mean, the beauty of his songs is you can dance anything. You can fit any dance to, you know, the right kind of song. So it does not say it has to be only this or only that. No, but the point is the songs themselves that he sang have a folk flavor. So it's not like you took, it's not like you took a romantic love song duet. Exactly, and ask yes. them to do a folk dance. Yes. So you're staying within the genre, it's just a different medium. Exactly. I mean, yeah, so people tend I to I think my mother them. spent my mother has spent a lot of time, you know, in picking and choosing the right songs and then assigning it to the various folk artists. Obviously, we can't give them one song and say, go and do this. We gave them a list of songs and said, okay, here, here are your options. Now, within your framework of what you can perform select a song. So we gave them a broad framework and said, okay, in your form. So if you have to do the Poikal Gudra, they, they, they would have selected a song that could be adapted to it. But yeah, the, the, the main thing was, uh, you know, showcasing in today's world. So basically, I mean, you can call it in multiple ways. You can say old wine in a new bottle. Uh, you, you can say making, uh, giving them an online window to showcase their talents. You can put fancy words to it, but what really hit us was these guys do not have real opportunities to be showcased. And that was our only thing. Well, it, this is something obviously that you have uh, funded from your own foundation because <laughs> sponsorship is, uh, you know, really, really almost nil for the arts. And it has been for the, uh, for the last 22 months. And it is a labor of love. I completely understand that. Uh, but uh, Parvati, I want to ask you a question. Were you involved in the rehearsal? Did you see uh, see them creating the work? Did you make suggestions to them? Uh, you know, why not do this? I just want to find out uh, at how much you were involved in the process. Yeah, when I gave them uh, the songs, especially Friends Folk Arts, that's a, a institution by themselves. They are all very young. Uh, dancers, folk artists, and they have come from a very, uh, what to say, uh, uh, they were actually street dancers. Okay. That group was a street dancers. And uh, slowly they, uh, they got their own uh, teachers later on, folk teachers, they went and had their training. And they are very popular now. So when, uh, when I gave these songs, uh, how to do Akka, please help us. So they came, all of them came home. And I told these songs, I was listening to the song and uh, trying to uh, tell them even that you can have it like Koikal Godre, you can do this like this. Then Mama Mama, one famous song, you can do like I was giving suggestions, lots of suggestions, because even Telugu songs were there for them, and they don't know the language, but the beats 
they were doing exactly how it was in the film mama 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 ye me me bhama ye me me bhama alu alu chupula to gala me silagi lage prem lo ki timpu walu miru kada alu alu chupula to gala me silagi lage prem lo ki timpu walu miru kada cheyi veya bote beduru taru vinta gada and also this is one side when we went to hyderabad lambadi lambadi dance folk dance uh, <laughs> i just saw their movements but they couldn't actually uh, get this song into their mind though they have heard many many times okay so i started giving them moments their own moments i was giving them eight counts this way that way i was dancing with them uh, it was <laughs> i was feeling so happy from bharatanatyam i shifted to folk <laughs> especially for uh, lambadi dance and uh, it was a fun and being with them and they were so happy so thrilled to be with us and uh, they really did so beautiful but we had to give practice there was practice session for them we took we gave some hours a few hours to practice and uh, their costume was very beautiful but other uh, styles were free hand uh, they also cooperated so well they were enjoying in fact they were very happily they danced i think when we were scouting for various um, uh, artists we reached out to the governments also uh and part of the trouble or the challenge was uh, getting hold of these people who were artists because now they had gone into other fields because they had nothing else to do uh they still had a family they still had life to live and they had literally taken on other professions so getting hold of these artists making them come together and then telling them here is an opportunity can you can we work together I think that's why I think we spent a lot of time because at one point my mom was like, you know what? I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. I'm not able to find people. Uh, so here is a thing where we were going in search of people and we were not able to find them. Well, you know, you're absolutely right because many of them just to pay, just to feed their families, had started uh, selling tea and selling milk packets or working as in some cycle repair shop. and driver auto drivers auto drivers of becoming a delivery boy a delivery person and because the, you're right because you know in india people don't realize that a lot of these folk artists also wait for the temple festivals and uh, to perform and it's a time between april and chitra masam or maybe little before from pangani masam and it ends now you know so if they don't have opportunities they earn in the 6 to 8 months and then they feed their families for the 12 months so for two years it has been cancelled for them so uh, it's been a very desperate uh, situation i know but my question to um, nandita and then to moinder and parvati is after doing this uh, this uh, folk arts festival which i must it must have taken a lot of effort to uh, not just uh, communicate but also to get the final product recorded on tape and then to edit it of course but um, do you think that it's worth thinking a little one step further and maybe thinking of uh, instituting some kind of a uh, scholarship stipend because one of the biggest challenges i find in parvati nandita and moinder is the younger generation of folk artists are not interested in continuing the tradition they want to go for other jobs if they can if they can because as nandita said they live the life they are they are maybe agriculturists during the day they dance in the evening they have a full life that is connected to the soil you know but the young kids with their with their phones uh, have such different their world view i think is different so um, i want to start with you nandita and then maybe go to moinder and then parvati uh, have you thought of what next after the festival for the folk artists themselves um so just to give it background of what kala pradeshni has been doing over the years is as such to propagate and promote arts so whether it be arts or folk arts it, it's pretty much the mission of the organization and uh, from what i understand my brother's vision going forward is also to ensure that this organization keeps 
true to its roots of you know providing opportunities uh, and I'm, I'm we are actually working on how to take it forward how to bring about programs where we can offer such opportunities uh, for uh, artists and also to it not just providing opportunities but also to be the connect between them and other uh, organizations that may be able to assist them. So that's the vision going forward for Kala Pradeshni. Mo, maybe you can elaborate a bit more because as I said, he's the puppet master. Uh, he, he's the brain behind everything. So probably Mo, do you want to take it forward from here and explain? Can I just, yeah, can I just say, Mohinder, one of the challenges uh, with, the, with the folk arts is not just the performers, the instrument makers as well. Because, you know, the instruments that go with the folk dances those instrument players, the instrumentalists, they are dwindling or vanishing, you know? So, uh, because the music, the instruments, and the performance goes together. So, um, so I, I just want to have your thoughts about what, what, what do you have for the future in this field? Uh, specifically, as all NGOs during the last 22 months, we are supported by the government, by our physical shows, and we have sponsorships. So the last 22 months have been really difficult for us to even sustain and, you know, keep at least bad limited activities going on. Uh, but then now we have a proper plan in place where uh, I wouldn't say we don't have a stipend program. Uh, or a program for a stipend, but what we want to do is be the connect and as a first step have uh, an opportunity opening for anybody who wants to perform. As a second step, we want to have more such series for other folk artists. So what you're seeing right now is just from Tamil Nadu and uh, uh, Telugu um, lands, but uh, subsequently we want, we want to expand this because you have other folk arts. I think there are about 26 or 24,000 different folk art forms of all, of, all over India, and we've touched barely a speck of it, uh, which means the opportunity is plenty. And I think there are more organizations uh, that are starting to you know, take up folk art. And what we're looking at is performing arts. You have other non-performing folk art as well. So there are different organizations that are starting to show this interest. It is going to take a long time because it's not as interesting as, you know, like... Uh, Western jazz or, you know, something that's more funky or hip hop. Uh, but that's something that we are trying to do in the way we present it. Uh, it's still a first step for us. Uh, because if you listen to the old songs on YouTube, you're going to have that slight buzz to the song. Uh, it's going to be black and white. But then we are trying our best to add color and flavor to that without reducing the actual musicality in it. Uh, and for a start, we are starting with my grandfather's, but as uh, my sister said, like collaboration is an entity that will go on forever. And we have the roots. We have my mother as a founder. She has her vision. Now we, we just need to make sure that this entity continues. We are starting off with my grandfather's because everything starts at home. Uh, but then we will not be restricting ourselves only to my grandfather's songs and be it'll start being more open and uh, we will be welcoming other folk arts. So just as we do our Natya festival, we will start doing a folk art festival as well going forward. Well, can I tell you, uh, Parvati, you said how happy you were to dance the Lamba with, you, with them. You know, the folk folk dance is so infectious. It You can spin it if you want. If you want to do it as cardio, you can spin it as something, you know. It's, it's because it, the beat is so infectious, the steps of each of the dances are so different and they will give you both a sense of joy, but also a great cardio workout. So it all depends on how you want to take it forward. But uh, uh, Parvati, I want to conclude our conversation by, would you like to say when it is premiering and what time on what handles? Uh, I also like to tell you something about the folk cards. During uh, my father-in-law's uh, production, there will be at least two or three folk items where my girls will dance. Okay, you're both students. Okay. So every time it is there, every programs and every year when we do the shows, there is folk dance of his songs. And uh, yeah, it's very enjoyable to have folk in the midst of uh, classical pieces. Well, I'll tell you, uh, when I did my Arangetra, we had to have a Korati dance, which is a uh -huh. folk dance. 
And yes. uh, now all Arangetrams are having some kind of a folk tune in it, which is a Murugan Valli. So it, it also has, it breaks a little bit and it, it makes the audience sit up a bit after this long Varnam. So I think the, and the folk tradition is very much part of, uh, I would say that the, the Tamil performance tradition, Parvati, it is, I don't think it has been so separate for, uh, for it, with, even within the Bharatanatyam world. To have a folk dance was very natural. So yes. I was, I'm glad that you, you have always had it and I'm glad you're in the way it's coming back. But um, maybe I can conclude by saying thank you to all of you for doing this for the folk artists. And it, um, the series uh, premieres on December 4th, which is a Saturday at 8 p.m. on the Kala Pradeshni YouTube uh, channel, as well as on their Facebook pages. And um, we at Nartaki will be amplifying the broadcast with, uh, with our own broadcast of the same content a little later. All details will be at the end of the program and will also appear uh, on all our pages. So thank you all for uh, what you've done, what you continue to do. Parvati, you are, whether you call your son the puppet master, it does begin with you and your deep love and respect for your father-in-law that I think you have shared uh, with your son and your niece. I think they're just sort of, sort of carrying the baton forward. And for yes. those of you who still are not familiar with who uh, Ghantasala is, please go to Wikipedia, Ghantasala Venkateshwara Rao. Is that what That's his... Absolutely the... right. Yes. Yes. And, but just known as Ghantasala. Uh, a voice that is unmistakable. If I can talk about his popularity, just think of Kishore Kumar and Mohammad Rafi and Mannadi and Hemant Kumar joined together. Their combined popularity was Ghantasala during his time. An absolutely unmistakable voice. And um, you can also listen to his voice because it's uh, thanks to digital media, you can listen to some of his songs. So stay tuned for the Folk Arts Festival that uh, launches the 100th year, uh, the birth centenary of the iconic Gandasala. Thank you all Gandasala family for being with us. And thank you viewers for watching. Namaste. Thank you, thank thank you for you. having us.